I'm John Glynn. Uh, what I'm going to do today is have a look at aperture value with your cameras. So that particular setting on your camera will be usually on the top somewhere. I'll put the camera like so so try and see the different settings. If you look at the top of your camera, for most people, uh, you will find that there'll be an A and there'll be an S and an M and so on. It's A or A mode as aperture value. You'll also find that on a Canon that will be a TV. But no, it'll be AV. So it'll be AV on a Canon aperture value. Okay, AV on a Canon camera, just A on most other cameras. Okay, an aperture. Aperture is where we set a hole in the lens. A hole in the lens is a thing that lets light in basically and I've got an example of that on old fashioned lenses. I've got an old fashioned lens here which actually had aperture numbers on the lens so that you could set the, the number you wish yourself and that number related to an actual size of the hole in the lens itself. So if you look down the a lens you would see a hole that's light in and as I change the aperture value, the F number as we call it, you can see that the the hole changes physical size. And obviously if it is open, it lets more light in than if it is closed down. Okay, now if we have a, we call that a, a, a small aperture, large aperture, and these relate to the numbers on the top here. So if you see on my lens I've got 1.8 that's a big hole and if I go to number 16 on the lens then that's a small hole. Okay and um, effectively it's a fraction um, of, the, of the lens you're using. So obviously if you've got a smaller camera system it may still have these numbers but the actual size of the hole is related to the size of the lens, but it's still a fraction of the lens. So an F16 in here is that size. If it's a smaller lens, F16 would just be a smaller hole related to the size of your lens. Okay. Um, what it amounts to is how much light is coming through the lens. So if we needed more light so we could take a picture more quickly, then we would open the lens up. And if there's too much light, we can close the lens down. Okay. Now, an aperture value, you set that number yourself. And to do that with modern cameras, you're going to do that not on the lens usually, but through the actual body of the camera. When it's on aperture value mode, you would then, if I just get this waken up, When you're on aperture value mode and we have a, an F number then we would turn a dial on the camera somewhere and it's usually at the back. It might be on the front of your camera depending on the type of camera you've got. It might even be a ring on the back. Somewhere you would turn a dial and when you turn that dial um, the F number will change. So you can set in aperture value, you can set the F number yourself and then the camera itself will do time and as I move the camera around, depending on the amount of light it sees will depend on what the time will be. So you can see that it's changing because it sees different amount of light and the more light it sees the quicker that time can be. If I need a quicker time, then I would open up the aperture. Okay, now these numbers will relate to your actual lens. So you must be aware that not all lenses, I've got a lens here which goes to f1.4, that is a very, very big hole. Most um, lenses that come with your camera, the maximum will be 3.5. Okay, it's, it's related to the actual lens you've got, not the actual camera you've purchased. And if you need a number which is smaller, so 
is smaller than 3.5 and 1.2 is smaller than 1.4 the um, the advantage of that is that the hole gets bigger and therefore you can allow more light in and take a picture more quickly so your shutter speed can effectively become quicker okay so I can set the aperture and as long as there's enough light I can take a picture and if I go to a very big number in the aperture which would actually equate to of course the smallest hole uh, the way I <coughs> excuse me the way I see this is if it's a, a piece of cake I get all the cake I have one of it I'll get all of it therefore I get the most of the cake and most of the light I have the whole cake all the light coming in as I uh, have got up the numbers in this case to number 16 f16 I now have a sixteenth of that cake and therefore I have less of the cake it's a smaller amount and the whole is smaller and there's, it takes longer to take a picture so basically the smaller the hole or the bigger the number rather the smaller the hole because the less I get so it's working like a fraction Okay, if I want something, I get all of it. If I get sixteenth of it, I don't get much. So therefore, a sixteenth of the whole is tiny, and one is all of it. Okay, and so the smaller the number, the more light you get. The bigger the piece of cake will be for you. Go the other way. The less light you get, the smaller the hole, and the less less cake you get as well. Okay. And that's the way I, I kind of try and visualise it as a piece of cake. Um, it will always, or generally speaking, will always take a picture, unless it's completely dark, in which case it won't be able to take a picture. But all that will happen in aperture value is the time will take longer and longer to take a photograph. So I'm now down to, what is that, one, just over a second. OK, and then it goes down, depending on where it sees the light, you can see it even goes down, goes down to two seconds and it will go down to five so if it's looking at the darkness it's going down to five seconds okay so four seconds and so on depending on the amount of light it will take a picture if i get into that sort of exposure time my problem will be um camera shake okay everything will be blurred so because i'm moving and we all move i have to be aware of that exposure time to make sure that that time isn't slower than my own personal shakiness okay and of course if I don't want the subject moving then it has to be faster than the subject as well so even though I'm setting an aperture I always have to be watching the exposure time to make sure that the exposure time is, is going to be will work and be right for my particular for my particular picture why would we want to set the aperture? What else does an aperture do apart from just allow light in through the lens or more light or less light? Why not just always set it at 1.4? Because then I don't have to worry about time so much. It will be sharp picture as long as there's enough light. Why, why do I want to change the aperture? Well, an aperture has another impact on our photographs. And that impact is, is known as depth of field. Depth of field is where we're taking a photograph. I've got examples of it here because it's easier to try and explain through pictures than to talk about it in the abstract. Basically, it's a, a way of taking photographs and we control the aperture and we then, through the aperture, can control what we call depth of field. How sharp are pictures from foreground to background? Okay. So if I'm looking at a photograph, as I am here, and I, it's, I'm, I it's, um, focus on my middle object, and I focused on this particular glass in each of these pictures, I never changed the point of focus, and I didn't change where I stood, and I didn't zoom in or anything, so it's always keeping the same distance. I put it at uh, 2.8, the aperture on my particular camera, on this particular lens that I was using, I could, I could take a picture at f2.8. You can see that the background is well and truly out of focus, and even the foreground is actually a little bit soft, it's not pin sharp, okay? 
and because it's not pin sharp, um, I've got a short depth of field. Short depth of field means I've got I don't have a lot of sharpness in the background and I don't have a lot of sharpness in the foreground either. And it means that I can control what people look at. So if I was photographing a person, I could keep them sharp but blur people in the background because I either don't know them or it's a bit fussy and there's lots going on in the background and I want to keep it very simple, then I can blur it. Okay, and I can do that in the camera partially by using the aperture that I choose when I take a photograph to start with. As I go to a bigger number, remember as I go to a bigger number I get a smaller aperture. I get more sharpness. So in this one it's around about f11 and um, it becomes sharper in the foreground and also sharper in the background compared to my f2.8. Okay. When I go to the smallest aperture I had on this particular lens, f16, and at f16 I'm now sharp from foreground right through to the background. So I'll put them both together and you can see the difference, hopefully. Okay, there we are. So I've got f2.8 is in the bottom one, f16 is the top one, and you can see that the bottom picture has less depth of field than the top picture. There's a greater depth of field, in other words, there's more sharpness from foreground all the way through to background with a smaller aperture. Okay. So if I was photographing a group of people and I want everybody sharp from the person at the front or all, all the way to the person at the back of the group, then what I would do is, is go to a smaller aperture, a bigger number on the F number. So maybe F8 would be ample. And I would have sharpness across the whole group. Now, on the first instance, we would, we would look at aperture as our guiding light, if you like, for, for choosing a particular, for choosing a particular uh, amount of depth of field. We would say, oh, well, we'll go to F8 or we'll go to F2.8 or whatever it might be. There are other factors that come into, into your, your equation, unfortunately. It's not as straightforward as just the aperture. The other factor that comes into it is going to be the lens itself, okay? Um, the bigger your lens is, there'll be a number on your lens. In this case, I've got one which is it's number 25. Um, if you've got a traditional single lens reflex, a digital single lens reflex camera, um, then it will be something like 18 to 55 or bigger because you may have a zoom lens on. The bigger that number is, the shorter your depth of field is, no matter what aperture you use. So if I want to really blur the background out of focus and have very, very short depth of field, not only would I wish to go for a, an aperture of 2.8 or 3.5 or whatever it would be, as small as possible, the smaller the number, the bigger the hole, the less depth of field I get, I would also want a longer lens. So traditionally we would have used something like an 80mm lens on portraiture and a small number on the aperture, big hole, and that would have blurred the background behind the person. If I want, wanted more blur, I would use a longer lens, so something like a 125mm lens or 200mm lens would be would blur the background out more okay the person you focus on or the thing you focus on will be sharp but the amount of sharpness front and back behind what you focus on will become less and less so if i were photographing a person and i want the eye pin sharp i'd focus on the eye but it is feasible then to have the nose the nose would be out of focus and maybe even the ear would be out of focus so your depth of field would literally just be between the, your nose to your to just behind the eye um, and that would be a very very short depth of field it would have been done with a long lens if you use a, a wide angle lens and zoom right in or get really physically close to people it would distort their face and make them look very strange so it would have been done traditionally with a long lens and a a, a, a small number on the f number okay to really throw things out of focus as you move away from your subject, then your depth of field gets 
becomes greater. Okay, it becomes a bigger field, and not only as you move away, but accordingly, if you go to a wider angle lens, the same effect happens. So if you have a lens which has got a small number on it, like 18, 15, 10, that's the wider the view, the smaller the number, the wider the angle, the more you can see in your picture, then the greater your depth of field is, no matter what aperture you use. Okay, so that's something to be aware of, that if you're wanting to control depth of field, it's not only the aperture, it's the focal length of the lens as well that will have an impact on your depth of field. And another thing that will have an impact is the actual size of the sensor in the camera itself. When we buy cameras, this one is a micro four third system. When we buy a camera, the actual physical size of the sensor, the equivalent of what we would have called film in the old days, also impacts your depth of field. So the smaller the sensor, the greater your depth of field is, again, no matter what aperture you use and no matter what lens you use. So effectively, mobile telephones with very, very small sensors in them are really, really difficult to throw out of focus. Um, this one, unless I've, you know, again, I've got 2.4 um, on, on this particular lens to try and blur the background. The, if I had a 3.5mm, or f3.5 rather, f3.5 on my standard sort of lens, my job with this camera would be, I wouldn't be able to throw much out of focus, if anything at all, unless I'm really, really close, purely because the sensor size is quite small. So if I wanted to have real control over depth of field, I would like to have a bigger sensor in the camera. The drawback of bigger sensors is I then got to have bigger lenses. Um, and then it's also a bigger physical body as well to fit the sensor, so it all becomes a much heavier system. Okay, so there are trade-offs here as to what you want to get out of your camera system. And we would have different cameras for, for different things effectively. But the basic principle always applies, which is that depth of field is largely controlled through aperture, but other factors do impinge on that through focal length of the lens and the size of the sensor in the camera to start with. Okay, so we will set the aperture because effectively we want to control depth of field, therefore. So what we're doing when we choose aperture value usually is because we have in our head, before we even take a photograph, a concept of how much blur or non-blur we want in our photograph, how much depth of field do we wish. If we don't want any depth of field, we're going to go to something like 1.8, because that will reduce the amount of depth of field we have. If we want lots of depth of field, if we want to have maximum sharpness, we're going to go to a bigger number. Okay, Generally speaking, that will work you would have to know that before you take a picture and the easiest way is to do these funny little tests like I did with those three glasses you could use bottles, you could use bollards outside you would, comp you would focus on the middle bollard and you would take a number of pictures, not every single one F aperture taking a picture at every aperture would just drive you crazy so you may do one at your widest aperture and that will depend on your camera as to what that can be. This one, most people, the maximum they get will be f3.5 with the cameras you're using, or the lenses you're using, and you may get down to f32. The smallest I can get on this one is f16, but on some of your cameras you get f32. You may, you were not going to do every single aperture of that range. You do 3.5, 5.6, and then maybe f8 or f16 and then a very small one as well. So you may have three or four options to look at, but you'd photograph the same subject from the same distance with the same focal length, and you do that for each focal length. So if you had a wide angle, you'd have it at 18, you do the same again at something like 35, and you do the same again at 55. And if you have a 200mm lens, you would do it at something like your zoom lens. So if you had 100 to 400 or 75 to 200, you do it at 75mm, do the same test again at something like a mid-range point and again at full range at 200 or 300mm, whatever it happens to be, of the same subject. The easiest way is to start by being zoomed in to start with and stay in the same place and then zoom out. Okay, and that way you've got everything in the same position 
related to one another. Otherwise, it throws the whole mathematics off. You can't change your position while you do this test. OK, um, have, a, have a go. It's a matter of, of just trying to work out your depth of field. And at least then you'll get an impression before you even take a picture. You'll have an impression of what the process will look like uh, with your particular kit. It is a bit of a boring technical exercise, um, but it is a way of learning your particular lens and camera combination and any particular weaknesses. Just check on aperture value. Probably you need a tripod as well in case the, the shutter speeds go very slow and then you won't get any camera shake and you want to do things which are on a static and you just do them in a row as I did um, so you can see each item fairly easily but uh, down down a row and then you could <clears throat> excuse me then you can actually see the depth of field change from picture to picture to picture and get an impression of what it actually is doing and then if you're going to friends party whatever it might be you would know before you turn up what sort of depth of field you're going to get from your particular camera and what aperture might be best to go to for a particular thing field that you want okay so the aperture value you set and then you would um, the camera will do the time for you automatically as you change the aperture okay hopefully that explains aperture or helps you to remember what the aperture is about um, so yeah thanks very much for watching